Welcome, Graham. Thank you very um, much. Because it is one minute to go, so I'll not start the session, as it were, till uh, till maybe some more people arrive. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, we've got six in the room now. So. Right, I can see Alex. Yep. Hello, Alex. It's I'm going to put my glasses on so I can read the names. I got my shirt on as well. I'm doing the same. Oh, like yeah, there we go. Yeah, there you are. It's getting on. Well, I've, got, I've got my fancy badge, but it says that I'm a show manager and I'm not yeah. anymore. <laughs> right. I've got a white badge somewhere. How come? <laughs> Thank you, pardon? How come? Hmm? How come I've passed the reins of Doncaster show manager on to uh, Kevin Day? Yeah. And because I've taken over the, the vice chairmanship of events. Um, oh, well, well done. And I'm Thank also going to be. Uh, a finance assistant as well at some of the shows. Oh, I used to be guild treasurer quite a long time ago. Uh, well, Malcolm Hector's the treasurer, but he says he wants uh, to be a finance assistant at each of the shows, and I'm going to be the one for Stafford. It's it's essential because documents need to follow through to central yes. yeah. within a, a reasonably short time, and that was one of the always one of the problems, especially hotel bills and things like that. Anyway. Yeah. I'm here to talk about Crew Chester. <laughs> you are indeed. You are indeed. And I think it's now around about time. Let's have a look. Yes, it's 13.30. Yeah. So I, I, I do have to do the little housekeeping thing where uh, I tell people that they can, because there's only a, a few people in the room, if they want to unmute themselves to ask questions, well, by all means do so. Yeah. But, but if there gets to be a lot of people in the room, we'd ask for you to... Uh, yeah, no, if there's just a few of us, it's a chat, yeah. so we can unmute, yeah. If you want to yeah. unmute Alex and Chris, I can see you're muted. Don't yeah. mind if I do. So, Chris, if you want to unmute yourself to ask questions, by all yeah. means, do so. Feel free. That's it, more atmosphere. And, uh, and, and Tim, if you want to unmute... Uh, anybody who wants to unmute themselves at the moment... Uh, because there's only a few people in the room, please feel free to do so. Yeah. Uh, so we can ask questions. And uh, if you want to raise your hand to say that you've got a question, I may or may not be able to see you because I only see a small proportion, but I'll try to scan that through. I, I if, can see Malcolm you, Sadler. Yeah, and if you John do have a question, you want to unmute, and Hillary. Yeah, if I do, if you do have a question and I don't get to you, Please use the text facility, which is the chat facility at the bottom, and to ask the question of everybody. Uh, and I'll see that and I'll pass the, relay the message on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can't see in, everybody. I can all, see four. Yeah, you won't see everybody, unfortunately. All right. Okay. That's the way it works. But I've got a little arrow so I can move up and down. Can move up and down. It's, yeah. It okay. doesn't show you anybody that's come in who. Uh, has, has decided to uh, mute their video. Yeah. So uh, there will be more people in the room than what what what, uh, what you will actually see yeah. pictures of. I'm just making a note uh, of those. There's John, Christine Walker, and Alex, John Pilly. Dent. Who's got a railway out in their garden then? I have. Is that Alex? Yes, Tim has. And Tim. Ask, ask a question, who had a railway in the garden? No, yeah. Oh, right, all right. Who had, yeah. Who yeah. had, me? <laughs> oh, yeah. that? Been there. Yeah, and Tim, I can see Tim. Yeah. You know, hello, Tim. Hello, nice to see you, Graham. Yeah, I don't know whether David might be joining us. He's in Portugal at the moment, David Robinson. Yes. He, he put the, uh, the video together. Well, we've been working on it for probably two or three months, I suppose, because it was quite long, ultimately. Um, and um, they say he's in, on holiday in Portugal, and uh, he's hoping to join us. But I had to play around quite a bit to, uh, to get on here just now, so he may be having the same difficulties, I don't well, know. I didn't open the meeting until five minutes before the time. Yeah, I had uh, to do it at 15 yeah. minutes before I've the time. James... Hello, well, James. I was busy. John Paley, I can see. I haven't got your pictures. Yeah. That's everybody. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's actually ten people in the room. Oh, with yourself, Tony. Yes, nine. And me. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Count yourself. Yeah. yeah. There we are. 
if you, if you hover your mouse at the bottom of the screen, it says participants and it tells us there's 10. Participants, oh, if I can. Yeah, so that will show, oh, yes. Yeah. Will that bring everybody up? No, but I can see them there. Um, so James and John and Christine and John and Malcolm can all unmute if they want. Okay. So start taking questions or. Has anybody got any questions for Graham well, about um, his uh, I, protest I, layout? I'd, I've got something I'd like to ask. Who's that? Um, most of the live steam that I've seen running is uh, on a continuous track, uh, usually putting quite um, substantial loads. But my yeah. railway is end to end. So is it practical to produce a gauge of steam loco with reversing facility? Um, that's t Is that Tim? Yes, that's me. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I do run because... I, there you are, too. I can see you, yeah. Um, I do run uh, without the bottom loop. The bottom loop, as you probably saw on the video, that goes around the, the kitchen wall, sort of down the bottom end here. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's not always practical to just put it up that quickly. It, it's not too bad. But I often run, and I do tend to reverse. I even use the turntable, actually, in the um, in uh, uh, Abbott's Dean Station um, to turn the loco round. But the problem is that the continuous run is what keeps water going into the boiler. And if you've got the blower on because you're not actually running, you're using up steam in that way, so that the boiler level is going down, and by the time you've turned and everything else, you might suddenly find you've got quite a drop. But if you've got a tender pump, yes, you can give it a quick twizzle every now and then. I wouldn't discourage because you haven't got a bottom loop. You'll get an awful lot of joy out of a, a live steam locomotive just running. Uh, and of course, you can always come to Kettering and uh, wherever son of Telford is. Um, where is it? Um, Stafford. Stafford. Stafford, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and you can run them on our test track there because, you know, but continuous running gives you the best loco performance. Having said that, I do like them to stop at the stations and obey signal checks and things, but then off they go again. But it just keeps the boiler level up. But I'm with the best will in the world, and I think in the future we'll be featuring one or two other layouts like uh, David Merrick's is a very large layout down in Wiltshire and when you set off you have to make sure you're fully tanked up fuel and, and water and off you go because it's the best part of a quarter of a mile round yes <laughs> uh, so um but it, it does keep them breathing well uh but even so quite often you've got to pull up somewhere and uh, as if you're pulling into a station and top up with water but the tender pump you give it a, a twizzle a few times and, and you've got stuff in there. But there is an axle pump on the, each loco, but it may not keep up with the boiler level, especially if you've got the blower open a bit. A lot of these engines will have slip eccentrics, I suppose. So but, reversing yeah. is a bit more difficult. Um, no, slip eccentrics is, is, is very easy. There are some, some locos out there with full uh, walls charts and, and a reversing wheel and, and everything else. Some of them, just don't go in reverse. <laughs> I, mean, I was yeah. quite surprised that yeah. one of our star performers, I said, do you want to reverse up to the train from there? He said, can't, I haven't got a reverse on here. No. So, whether he was <laughs> avoiding road tax, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but continuous running will give you the best performance. And, of course, the more water that goes through the boiler and through the uh, cylinders, uh, the more it's just keeping things clean. Yes. But again, we, we make sure our water is um, uh, not demineralized, not de deionized, but pure water. But by and large, most of us use it from our water butts and filter it. I'm, I was ex-army, so I've got a Millbank bag. It comes in very handy now. It used to keep me alive at one time. Now it keeps my engines alive. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question, Tim. And are some of these locos uh, remote control uh, of the regulator and so on? Um, yes, they all got regulators, but uh, there are one or two. I think you probably saw the um, um, Battle of Britain, yes, uh, one that was very, very steamy that sat up in, in uh, Crewchester Station and then came yeah. up. That is radio controlled, right? But by and large, we don't bother with radio control. It's nice to drive them, 
Um, my layout has got a very slight gradient going up, very, very slight. It's actually meant to be level. Uh, but um, going around and through the tunnel, as it goes around the far side of that top loop, it's it's got a bit of a climb on until it gets to the sort of crest of the you know around the right around the top of the loop and then it starts to gather and it, unless you knock the regulator back at the top of the loop it will come through Crewchester station at 180 miles an hour yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing so it's good it's but people say no I like your layout because I have to drive it drive it right, okay. and that's good yeah. uh, and okay. again you're you're balancing your your steam production um, with with the blower and your utilizing the steam with the amount of regulator that's open but the bigger the load obviously and we do pull eight ten twelve carriages on occasions so thank uh, you yeah. a question to you uh graham yeah uh, who's that your layout is called steve steve robinson. that's steve uh, r yeah steve robinson yeah steve hello steve. Um, yeah. your, gotcha. your layout's called crew chester um is it the original crew chester that I remember from my youth, or is it a completely new layout? Uh, no, well, it, it is a totally, it's my own layout. What The, the story behind it was Jack um, started his crew chester off in Kelverden uh, back in 1952. Then he moved to Ipswich and built up crew chester and, and uh, Ravenscale and all, uh, what was it called? Ravens, Ravensmore. And Wilson Street, uh, Hartwich, Wilson Street. He had wonderful stations around. The layout went all the way around the garden. Uh, it was uh, coarse scale. And Crewchester Junction was virtually where the layout returned to the, the garage, which had the Trenton Town bit in the bottom end. Uh, but it also had a, a junction to go back up and around past Ravensmore and go back up the garden. Uh, and it was quite a big junction. I think you probably saw one of the early photographs of Crew Chester in my introduction. And um, it uh, was a big station. And it stayed a big station for a long time. Jack phoned me in about 2002. We were very, very close friends uh, for about 25, 30 years. Because I was in the army, I only moved back to, I'm in Colchester now, moved back into this sort of area back in the early 80s, or very early 80s. And so we um, struck up a friendship then. And he phoned me and told me somewhere in 2002, he was going to have to take the layout up. He'd been nursing his wife for four years, who'd been bedridden, uh, and he'd had very little time to sort of turn to the layout. And he said he was going to dig it up. And I was over there with him and we were, I remember we were trying to prise the turntable out of the baseboard, but it had huge bolts underneath, which had all rusted up, you know. And I said, what about the buildings, Jack? What are you going to do, do with those? He said, oh, then get down to the tip with everything, go in the skip with everything else. And I said, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> I said, could I possibly take the buildings? And I said, I, I can find a home for them. Because they've got the most perfect site at the top there. Uh, you know, I personally think it's very photogenic uh, up in the greenery. Um, but um, he said, no, I'd be delighted. So I adopted, I kept the Crew Chester name, kept it alive. And, and for a good few years after we'd taken his layout up, he was coming over here. He actually died in 2011, 2012. Uh, he was 95. But he was a great inspiration to me. And, and doubtless he, he was to you. Um, you say in your youth, yeah, it goes back a long time. Oh, well, yeah, I, I can I can remember it from sort of the early railway models that I bought. Yeah, at the magazine. Uh, and I apologise, I've not seen your video because I've been quite busy today with other things. So uh, you talk about the video. I haven't seen any anything else as such uh, from the show. Uh, I've been involved with other things. Yeah. Uh, but that was my question. Is, is oh well, it hopefully payment? you'll enjoy later on. Um, <laughs> it, I mean. Jack's layer always had drool factor, didn't it? It, it was it, as kids, you saw this wonderful garden layout, and I thought, wow, one day, and that's what it did. And I suppose I was driven from that time on. Someone just gave me a magazine and said, Oh, you like trains, don't you, Graham? <laughs> and there was this Jack Ray layout in there. I mean, and to to live reasonably near him later on in life, I mean, I actually grew up in Brighton. Uh, so um, 
uh, miles away from where he was, but he was an extremely good communicator. He wrote in all the magazines. He did lots of f- photographs and he described what he was doing. Crewchester battles on, Crewchester to the rescue, Crewchester again. There were loads and loads of articles. Um, and uh, he, he just communicated so well. Um, but it, although it was coarse scale, it was very, um, very realistic. And I think you'll see in the video, there's actually an oil painting down in my garage that someone did of a photograph. And those are all Crewchester photographs along the back there. But behind my head is the Crewchester buildings. They, they, they come in um, when, when I'm, you know, the, the railway is pretty bare outside when I'm not running. Um, but I certainly don't leave those buildings exposed. I rather feel I have a responsibility um, and it probably is a one-off that I've actually uh, am now the custodian of a preserved model railway station. <laughs> yeah. There is, we go. is your layout to course scale or fine scale? Fine scale. It's all uh, Pico track. Um, as I mean, the, the worst um, enemy of the Pico track outside is the sun, yes. because obviously the plastic goes brittle. But in all honesty. Um, I get a bit of ground shift. The way in which the layout is built, as it comes out of the garage or the shed on the back of the garage, I added this the extension, which is now the home of Abbotstein Station. And then it's on builder's planks. Nothing more, nothing less. Builder's planks, good heavy stuff. Uh, they're all covered in um, bitumen and they're supported on um, scaffold poles and uh, feet upside down bolted onto those but I've grown hedge on one side it's Catoniasta hedge on one side and then uh, there are um, trays with conifers in well when I say trays they're window box type things they all drop in on the far side I mean I can actually lift everything out I do once a year because the whole lot tends to sink a little bit so I reset it all but the conifers I originally grew at uh, a spacing enough that when you filmed it at an angle, you, you, you it blotted out the fence. That was the whole idea. Uh, and you just got greenery at the back. But I mean, they've all grown and um, I have to replace about three or four conifers a year, I suppose. They're only small, um, but it's enough to, to give a good backdrop. Um, and also the, the Catoni Aster hedge provides a sort of field. Uh, at the front. I've been looking at um, uh, one of the other Garden Railway videos today, and I noticed he's got a sort of grass margin down either side of um, his track boards. But the track boards go up as far as uh, Crewchester. That, that is actually hollow up there. But when it goes off and through the tunnel and round the top loop, that is all concrete. And the, the branch line dropping down in between. Have you, have you all watched it today? And seeing the branch line and stuff in the middle, no, but it, uh, it that's all on concrete and it's um six inches deep, um, and about six inches wide, and uh, it's got members set in the surface of it, um, at every six inches. They were timber to start with, but now they are um bits of soffit board, but that doesn't rot like the timber did, um, mm-hmm. and the upturned spikes that I originally put in the shutter work uh, are still there so the and I just cut the um, soffit board slightly larger than the groove and just hammer them in and they seem to to do well and then I batten put a quarter inch batten on top of that and the track lays on the batten but the batten gives me chance to make sure it's nice and, and even and level and um, then it's ballasted and then I I don't go around with this sort of little syringe putting it in between each sleeper. <laughs> um, I go around with the bottle with a bit of a hole and I just flood the whole lot with ballast and I, or, or with um, uh, PVA glue and I just leave it. But I do it when I'm redo, redoing track. It will probably be July, late June, early July, because I know I'll probably get a good few days of hot sun. And the minute that is all settled down and it's gone dry i then paint it with uh something like um what's the stuff you paint doors with the 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 dark brown stuff saddling 
I paint it with saddling, a bit watered down, uh, and it's a bit glossy to start with. It soon goes off. But any old gloss paint I may, can make a dirty brown track colour. That's what I paint it with. But that then seals the ballast and um, prevents the PVA being undermined. But inevitably, yes, where, where rain persistently drips off a tree or something, it will start to erode a hole in the ballast. But by and large, it's, it's not too bad. Have any problems with cats? Cats? No, foxes. In fact, on, I think on the video, I say, oh, look, there's... <laughs> In the early part of the thing, I said, look, as a fox expressed his opinion, he's pooed all over the track. Oh. Um, I mean, I get, and bird poo as well is another thing. Mm. Um, it does derail the locos and it tends to slow them down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I have wanting, to go around and clean up. At least you're not wanting electrical continuity. No, I, I used it, it used to be 12 volt DC, but... Um, uh, again, I used to have open days for the local, you know, Gage, the Guild Group here. Uh, but it was awful because somewhere along the line, a joint would break or we'd lose continuity for some unknown reason somewhere. Uh, and when it, it, I mean, the track plan, obviously, with a, a larger track plan, gets quite complicated. Uh, and um, I just thought that this 12 volt DC business, the, the cable, the wiring is still there. Uh, but I just don't use it. And the best thing in the garden by a mile is radio controlled battery. And I just happen to have an engine here. There's a there's an M7. Its bunker hasn't got any coal yet. But if I, I've just turned it on, it's probably flashing its little red light somewhere. And I've got the this here. And there you go. So I can walk around the garden. There are 10 AAAs in this loco. And there is the radio control unit. And I can just walk around the garden with that. But above all, what is nice out in the garden is I can give that to other people to play with the player train, which <laughs> thrills them to bits. And hopefully it might get a few converts and a few more guild members. I don't know. But... Um, yeah, I mean, it's very simple. And if you look at it, I haven't painted it yet. This one's relatively new, but I don't know how much you can see that it's radio controlled battery. Answer no, because the batteries are all up in the, the boiler and across the top of the motor. The motor's an ABC gears, uh, is it Maxon motor? And there's enough clearance for seven batteries in the boiler and another three along the top. So when we're not always using live steam or when we also um, do a bit of shunting here and there, I suppose even like the preserve railways, they bring out their diesel shunter, don't they? To do mm -hmm. things um, that the steam locomotives might not necessarily do. So it's quite nice to have some other electrical, but I don't have to worry about trackside continuity, anything at all, because, um, um, just making sure the track is relatively clean. To be honest, adhesion is better when it's not clean. But then, say, with all the other things that tend to get on the track, then, uh, I, yeah, I do every now. Plus, the fact it doesn't do much good for your wheels, does it? No. <coughs> We're a bit a bit um, coarse when it comes to garden railway, and we clean most things with petrol, <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in live steam, because of oil. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, with any of these live steam locomotives, you've got to um, introduce oil into the system uh, through a lubricator, which actually gives an oil mist to go into the cylinders. So there you are. You have Anyone any else? Did that answer the question? question, whoever asked that one? Steve, was it? Uh, um, about the about Coochester. Yes, it was. Um, Steve, yes, yeah, Steve. Yeah. You've gone off the air, I'm afraid, Steve. Yeah, I'm, I'm still here. I've just turned my video off for a moment. All right. Um, so, yeah, it, it was just, as I say, it was the name that rang bells. I, I haven't watched the video, so I don't honestly know. I, I didn't know what the layout really was, other than it's live steam. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of, I won't say jumped in at the deep end, but I'm yeah. uh, acting as co-host with Tony for, for this one. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, it's, it's come as a bit of a re revelation, really. Um, uh, well, I hope I've whet your appetite to watch it. Uh, well, well, yeah. Um, as to whether I want to actually build another garden layer, I think the answer to that one is honestly no. Um, we we found um, I, I, my track was on sort of ground level. Um, it was relatively sort of well secured, etc. It was all pico, but um, it suffered from gardeners, i.e., myself and my wife. We were forever standing on it or damaging it because we were. We were doing other things in there. It, it was it wasn't the main emphasis in the garden. Oh so right, it yeah. Became, it became quite um, a problem more than a sort of enhancement to the garden. So yeah, eventually it came up. Plus, plus I was getting track damaged by um, youngsters coming in for the footballs because we had a, a children's play area at the back of the garden. Oh right, ended to climb over the wall, and the back of the wall was yeah. part of the track. I mean, the, the track was not damaged deliberately, but Sort of even getting sort of a stone person dropping yeah. two or three feet onto a, a track bed that's secured on I, it was secured on mahogany uh, cross laps yeah um, but drop onto that and it doesn't do pico track much good and I, I just thought well perhaps this is not the best way to sort of do my old gauge modelling so yeah yeah that that was the reason it came out I mean I enjoyed building it and. For a very short period of time, I enjoyed running it, but it was oh, a absolutely. Short I think there's no finer hobby, and there's no finer use of the garden. In all honesty, um, uh, and especially when when we have our steam days here, I mean they they do come from miles around. I've had uh, well, Bill Wilson used to come up from Bournemouth, um, God rest his soul. Uh, I've had them come across from uh, from Wales, uh, and then Rafe and um, Trevor come down from the Midlands from Stoke. Um, there's um, David Robinson comes up from Marlborough. Uh, so, you know, we do travel quite a bit. And we're often up sort of on the road by six o'clock to get down to someone's for 10, have a, a good, good old steam day. Probably only six or eight of us, but it wouldn't be, wouldn't be good to have any more because people wouldn't get a steam, you know, by and large, we run about two or three locos each in a day. But mm -hmm. they each run on um, the, the tank full of meths for about, 30 35 minutes so and if there's any sort of slight gremlins en route then it might slow it down even more but um my railway is big enough for two two live steam trains to be running at a time one going up the main line one coming down but nonetheless it's the same circle i mean effectively it's a it's a circle squash flat it's a dog bone um but i think that and David does a lot of photography, but we get some really lovely passing shots of, of trains, you know, passing each other on the up and down lines and things. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it's it's a thoroughly nice day. It's sort of the cake and the biscuits flow. We sort of mm -hmm. taking a half an hour off for lunch and the that and the other, and everybody has a good time. Um, the railway here doesn't actually interfere with the garden at all because it goes up the right hand side. And when I actually started this off, as I, say, as I say in the video, I didn't really know where I was going. I was just going to go up the garden and um, then realised there was a, a scope for a top loop. And that's why the viaduct is in there, because it literally has to bridge a bit of a void. Uh, and um, Don Neal's book, uh, Garden Railways, another thing that set me off. Um, Don, Don Neal is still with us. He's something 96 or so he's got one of the lowest guild numbers like 20 or something like that um in uh, and it was don neil he, that he's got a beautiful beautiful viaduct um and i just copied the way he did his which was literally uh one one central arch and two half arches and then you sort of plug them together uh, but that i did it in concrete and, and i cut carved the shutter work for it and everything else to look a little bit like um Art and Gill or somewhere like that on the Settle and Carlisle. Nice stonework viaduct. And um, they've lasted well, each of those arches. And I think I cast ultimately about 13 of them. Uh, quite a few are only half width because they actually go along the front of the board, um, along the straight section. And the viaduct is, is the sort of cur real viaduct, is the curved section which gets across to then go through the tunnel. So it's all a bit Somerset and Dorset.
Mm. Um, you know, over a viaduct and through a tunnel, yeah. <laughs> and then over another viaduct. Yeah. There you go. Don Neil, Don Neil is actually member number nine. Number nine, is he? Yeah. yeah. Jack was 21. No, you Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a lovely chap. Uh, and uh, he, he wrote a book, Garden Railways. I don't know if I can possibly see it, but I won't interrupt now. Uh, well, he wrote a little book. I saw it actually pinned to a um, shop window, pinned up in a shop window in Inverness, of all places. Goodness me. Um, back in the 70s, and I grabbed it. I think it was one pound ten. <laughs> well, we are coming towards the end of our session now. Yeah. We've got about a minute to go, but that is not necessarily a, a fixed minute. So if anybody else has got any uh, questions for Graham... It's, it's Tim again, uh, Graham. There's a, a Southern uh, Q1 on your video. I wondered if that's spirit-fired or coal-fired or... That's spirit-fired. It was my right. first attempt. My uh -huh, first you're... attempt at a, a live steam engine. I've seen Rafe with a Q1. Was it yours then? Or yeah, well, no, it? no. Rafe had a had a crack at it. I built it as a single cylinder engine. It spluttered a bit. <laughs> Rafe said to me, he came down on a steam day, he said, let me take it away and I'll have a look, see what we can do with it. It came back with a two cylinder engine. Right. And, and an absolute sewing machine underneath. It was beautiful. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a beautiful model now. Um, but uh, no, it, it's it's what I built, and I'm trying to think what's what's left of mine. Probably the wheels and <laughs> and the body shell. <laughs> the original. You built it from scratch originally, did you? Yeah, I built it from scratch. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I just got the bug. I uh, yeah. the thing is, I got the um, Bullet Pacific, which was a David um, what's his name, David Bailey uh, model. He only built four or five of them. He advertised in the Gazette back in the, oh, I don't know, 90s. And um, I put my name down for one of those, and four years later, it actually materialised, which was oh. great. And um, having had to do things to it, so I thought, well, I can I could have a go at one of these, start building. And I got numerous books, and I've got Eddie Cook's book. Um, and I'd swear by Eddie Cook's book, yes, you can, you can make some of the components a bit smaller, but he was a great pioneer, Eddie Cook. Um, in, in live steam, and I'd recommend it to any of you. It's a phenomenal um, hobby. It's demanding, and the smaller you get, the less forgiving each tolerance is. You get away with a bit more in gauge one, and you get away with even more in five inch, you know, or gauge three. So, um, uh, but I would recommend it. But you, you obviously need a lathe because you've got to turn bits up. Um, and you also need a milling machine. But um, I suspect you've all got those, and Unimets and things. Yeah. Are you doing things, Alex? Are you moving towards live steam? Uh, I just found it interesting, Graham, and I just thought that my dad and myself can watch a bit of videos of live steam because I found it interesting. It's very good and thought I could do the same. I've been watching a garden where we on YouTube with my favorite YouTuber, New Junction, who yeah. he does the, he does the garden where we in O-Gage. That is also interesting. Yeah. Well, on YouTube, I mean, O-Gage live steam, mm -hmm. you will see live steam in Wiltshire, live steam on David Merrick. Yeah. Um, Chris um, Lovell is another one. You know, they're outdoor layouts. Um, and we all, all go to those. Um, as I say, David Merrick's is, is quite a demanding layout because it's big. And when you set off, you make sure you, you're full up mm -hmm. and off you go. The first bit to confront you is a 45 foot tunnel. <laughs> oh. So ah. you, you make sure regulators set <laughs> <laughs> or you've got a 46 foot train. <laughs> <laughs> That's too big. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. No, it's quite a challenge. Yeah. But, um, Come, uh, I mean, hopefully we will all be at uh, Kettering in March. Indeed, yes. Yeah, I, I, I should certainly be there and Rafe and, and uh, you know, and we're always glad to talk over the test track to people who've got an interest in it. I mean, there are some I say, so what sort of smoke unit do you use? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, no, no, it's actually, and you, you show them the fire because they can actually see the fire. But the blower is a thing which drags the air down through the boiler and keeps that flame nice and blue. 
and very steady. That's the big thing. I mean, you get external. I've got one externally fired engine, but the the flame tends to sort of flap all over the place and and lick up round the boiler, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the originals and things like the Bassett Loke, uh, unless any cook got at them and and completely modified them, uh, it was uh, a case of the flame just licked round the boiler. But these are actually very controlled flames now and um, controlled heat. Uh, and, and, and makes a loco a good steamer. But obviously you don't want to let that boiler level get too high because then you've got no steam space. So it, it's all, it, it's a learning curve. And it took me about 20 years. I've been the sort of amateur <laughs> of the group for a while, but I'm getting some good runs nowadays with my, I, another one I built was my King Arthur Excalibur, uh, which you've probably seen running. And I delight the way that that just takes off from, nothing and runs very slowly uh, as it goes rather than accelerate ever so fast mm -hmm. it's um a that's a delight there well, we are are we talking about a delight it's been a delight talking to you uh and thank you very much graham for coming on thank you for uh, providing us with a video for the show as well and i'm sure on behalf of everybody here thank you very much thank you very thank much you. tony and, and nice to meet you all good thank morning you, very interesting look forward mm -hmm. to see you in um Catering. Yes. Yes, yes I'm yes. willing. Definitely. <laughs> Take well, care, everybody. Thank you yourselves, and uh, thank you. Again. My pleasure. It's been entirely my pleasure. Thanks a lot. Bye bye then. See you. Bye. 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 Cheerio bye. to everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. Cheers now. Bye then. Bye, everybody.